All right, at this point what I've done is I have come in and I have filled in the acacia branches for you. And this is just so that you can get a feel for what the branches are, are like, you know, how I, I didn't want to sit there and do it for a long period. It's actually a protracted thing to sit there and go through it all. Uh, and I didn't want to time lapse it for you. I noticed a lot of people do time lapses on the video and it's kind of nice, but when they're time lapsing, you're not really getting a lot of instructional out of it. So my idea was uh, just go ahead and basically kind of come in and show you a little bit. I'm adding leaves to this first uh, and then I'll come back in and I'll darken the trunk. And uh, usually I do it the other way around, but because the, the leaves are going to be so dark, uh, it really shouldn't be a problem to come back in and just fill it in. So what I'm going to do, and, and the leaves on these acacias are very, very fine. So what I'm basically doing is I'm just coming in and I'll start with the foliage and I am using just the edge, the very, very tiny edge of the knife point right on the tip. So what I'm doing is I'm right here on the very point and I'm using the flat. I'm not, I'm not coming down right on the point itself. I can come at a higher angle, which will make a little bit sharper and smaller leaves should I wish to do that, and I, I certainly can. But right now I'm going to bulk out the leaves that you see. And those leaves, all it is is a series of dots because you're seeing it from a, a distant perspective. So I will build up the dot layer and I'll basically follow the way that the canopy and the tree is. These trees are called umbrella acacias, and the umbrella acacia is called that because it does provide like an umbrella shade and even some protection from rain downpours on those rare times when they get a lot of rain when it's monsoon season in Africa and they get a lot of rain coming down very quickly on these African belts and plains. Um, and in doing so, you will start to make this really stand out. And I mean, that's your ultimate goal is you want it as, as realistic as possible. You want it to look really good. You want it to be, you know, the, the art form that I do is called photorealism. And what that is, in essence, is trying to make something look as, as close as you can to a photograph. And I have heard people criticize it and criticize this art form, saying, well, you know, what you're doing is basically you're, you're a human copying machine. And uh, I think that's kind of funny because most of the people who lobby that accusa accusation are usually artists who are practicing art forms that really don't require a lot of skill or talent. I notice that a lot. You get people who are doing abstracts or surrealism, and if it seems like I, I pick on these art forms a lot, or I mention them a lot, I, I periodically do. And I'll tell you why I do that, because I've seen some things that are so easy to do, and, and I equate skill level with how difficult something is to, to achieve. Um, I've seen art forms where you see abstract art and, you know, if you like abstract because of the aesthetics, great, kudos to you, that's awesome. But if you see abstract, a lot of abstract art is being produced today to make millions of dollars, literally millions of dollars per piece, off of people who have no idea that it's just basically simple crap that anybody can do. The way I look on it is if your five-year-old or four-year-old or six-year-old child can produce abstract or any other art form very readily at that age, it's not really art per se. I mean, it might be art in the loosest sense, but it's really not. And so I'm very into art that actually takes some skill, some time, some ability to make. And so the idea here is that you want to try to make this as photographic as possible. You want to try to make something that is uh, that people can recognize. They can look at it and go, okay, that's a tree. Okay, that's a lion. That's a bush. That's, that's a rock. That's whatever. You know, if you're working with water, you want it to look like water. If you're working with a landscape scene, you want it to look like that scene. You want to take your time. We have covered this before. Now, my burner is set at a lower setting than normal. Like I said, uh, I could kick it up just a little bit, but I don't want to go too hot because I'm actually trying to get this to um, 
come in softer and lighter. So I can take a little bit of time with the leaves at a lower temperature like we covered before. Um, you know, I'm about 700 degrees, maybe 680 degrees right now. Plus I've got a fan blowing on this today and the fan helps to keep it cool so I don't get much heat radiating beyond the heat shield. It actually does kind of sweep some of that upcoming heat away and it allows me to work barehanded. Uh, I don't have to worry about wearing the gloves or, or, you know, anything other than keeping my hand on the basic cross guard. And that's not always the case when you're stippling, for example, and you've got that heat turned up to 800 or 950 degrees, um, it gets very, very hot. The burner gets extremely hot. It's even at times difficult to handle and you have to make sure that you've got adequate ventilation. Ventilation is a big key to wood burning. You're not producing a lot of smoke fumes. There's a big misconception, I think, among people who don't wood burn that you're going to produce a lot of smoke or fumes. You really don't because you're not really burning the surface in a traditional sense. This is not a fire that you're trying to start. It's, it's light scoring of the wood. So that's what you're doing. And basically, as I, as I go along and I do this, I'm building up this layer of leaves and eventually this will come out and, and start to resemble um, a tree. Now I have several images of acacia trees. Um, you don't have to work from an exact image. It's a tree. This is one of those areas where you can take a lot of artistic license and really have fun with it. Um, but do remember we, we talked about things like, like we said about uh, animals and plants uh, giving you a clue about their life and how they grow and live based on their, their physiology, on their structure, on how they look. And the acacia tree, everything kind of, uh, uh, it has a certain look that you have to achieve. And in order to achieve that look, you have to kind of follow the guidelines. And again, always go with, you know, any kind of images or, or nature. You don't have to be exact, but you do have to kind of follow the rule and, and make it look like what it's supposed to look like. You want people to look at it um, and obviously recognize what it is, what kind of tree it is, if you can. You know, something as iconic as an acacia tree, because of the way that they grow, uh, you don't want anybody mistaking that for anything else. And it's really difficult to mistake it for anything else if you're actually looking at uh, these trees on an African plain or in an African savanna. You know, when you start looking at these things, they have a very distinctive pattern of growth. They have a very distinctive way that the leaves come out because these are uh, a very unique tree. You, you can't afford to be as generic with them as you might with other species of trees. A lot of trees grow differently. Um, with trees, the biggest thing is that you need to know uh, what the general shape of these trees are. Are these a, a tall tree, a shorter tree? Do they grow? very tall and then spread out, or do they grow very tall and keep their their branches more inward? I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that you have to know, you know, in general about what you're working with. And the more that you know that, the more you study what you're working on and, and how it's supposed to look, the more you can achieve that and the simpler that it is to do that without a lot of effort. You know, I mean, as you can see, this is, this is not a difficult thing to do. You can do this at home. I'm just using the tip, just the flap, you know. Um, but in doing so, I'm starting to create that acacia tree look. And once I get a little farther along with this, and I'll, I'll not, I'm not going to show you every step, I, I'll kind of jump around. But once this gets a little farther along, you'll see that it's actually a very easy process. You can do this at home with your own burner. Um, again, uh, earlier too, I want to clarify on something. I was talking about one of one of my friends who, who does the wood burning with the uh, shader tip, and that wasn't really a criticism of the tip, but rather uh, me pointing out that I believe that you can do an easier job with a universal. But that said, <clears throat> something I've told students for a long time, and I'll, I'll continue to expound on it. It doesn't really matter how you get the job done. You know, you can use anything to get the job done. So if you find that yourself drawn to a certain 
type of point, and this 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 works also for high end burners. This is a an iron style burner, but you can do this with high end burners too. If you find a tip or a wire point or anything that you like, anything that's really uh, anything that's really working for you, if you if you're comfortable with it, use it. You know, don't don't worry about what anybody else tells you. Because I can tell you something, and another expert can tell you something. Any any artist uh, who's been doing this for a while, any of the, the pros, uh, or anybody who's very experienced in this form, can tell you anything, uh, and and can give you all the pointers that they want. But the bottom line is, if if you're not comfortable with those techniques, if you're not, if you found something that you like better, that you've gotten used to, or that you've started to get really proficient with. By all means, go with that. You know, make it work. That's that's the bottom line. Do it your way. Your way is never going to be wrong. You know, but do take the time to experiment a little too. I always find myself when I see other techniques being used, I like to delve into those. I like to uh, revisit things and see if maybe what somebody else is sharing is maybe more uh, efficient than what I'm doing, or, or has some some advantages over what I'm over the way I'm doing something. You know, if I can improve myself, uh, especially with the help of what others have already discovered or, or are doing, then certainly I, I love to do that. And I think that everybody should take the advantage to uh, exploiting, I guess exploiting is a bad word, but um, learning from the uh, experience of people around you that are doing the art that you, that you really enjoy or that you see and, and you really like their work. So if you like an artist, you see their work a lot, and you, you really enjoy what they're doing, by all means, you know, replicate it. Do it, in, you know, make it yours. Do it your way. But, uh, yeah, definitely, you know, I think that's a very important aspect of the artwork. So without any further ado, we are going to shut down this portion of the video, and I will return to you uh, in the next video. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about what's being done and how it was done, and uh, I'll go over a little more about the progress on this burn. This burn has about 270 hours into it, literally, right now. And by the time I'm done, it's probably going to have somewhere around 400 hours into the burn. But it's necessary to get that done because I'm working on such a large-scale project. Uh, so good luck with your own burns. Um, you know. Keep on working on it, keep practicing, and if you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to leave me comments uh, at the bottom of the, the YouTube page, or you can look me up on Facebook. And if you look me up on Facebook, uh, you can either look me up directly uh, with my Facebook account, or you can go to The Amazing Art of Eric Brush and uh, check out some of my work there. And uh, also, if you go on to chirographyonline.com and this is not my website I'm just promoting it because I have a lot of stuff there but if you go there you'll find some really really strong tutorials and those tutorials are going to the written tutorials they will really take you into uh, some in-depth explanations about some of the things that are done how they're done uh, how you can achieve these effects very easily and uh, with a little bit of practice and a little bit of reading, you can really take advantage. So hopefully I'll have answered a lot of questions that you have on there. And if not, like I said, I always welcome people getting a hold of me and asking me things. If you, if you have questions about what I'm doing or how I'm achieving effect, uh, please don't be a stranger. Just go ahead and, and get a hold of me and let me know. That said, uh, thank you for watching the video and have a great day.